All right, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. So as we normally do, we'll read from scriptures and then we'll come to a conclusion. So we can first start with Luke chapter 12, verse 1, Luke 12 and 1. Give everybody a moment to get there. All right, Luke 12, verse 1. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trolled one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, beware you of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Hmm. So now let's go to Matthew chapter 23. Starting at one, Matthew 23 and one. All right. Matthew 23 and one reads, This make y'all shout out to the multitude and to the disciples saying, the scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do you not after their works, for they say and do not, which that's what hypocrisy is. For they bind every burdens and grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all of their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries, they enlarge the borders of their garments, and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and the greetings in the markets and to be called men, rabbi, rabbi. So now let's go to, let's jump down. Uh, to 13, verse 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour, vow, you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore you shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you can pass sea and land to make one proselyte or a convert. And when he is made, you make him twofold more of the child of hell than yourselves. So let's go down to, drop down to 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and cumin and, and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought you have to have done and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides which strain at a net and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup hmm. and the, of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. You blind Pharisee, clean first that which was within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto the white supplicants, which indeed appear outward, uh, beautiful outward, but within are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, both hypocrisy and iniquity. So Mashiach gave the warning of beware of the leaven of hypocrisy which is what the scribes and Pharisees were doing. They had the law that says do what they say they do, but don't do after their works because they didn't do what they say they were supposed to do. They were hypocrites. They were adding things, taking advantage of widows. They were making long prayers. They wanted to be seen of men. They wanted the best seats at the feast. These things, were, which was hypocrisy, they were bragging about their tithes, their offerings, but they omitted the weighty matters of justice, mercy, faith. And it says that when they will convert one, they will make them twice the child of hell than themselves. Mm -hmm. So they will put burdens on the people, judgmental, things that they would not help the people out. They didn't care about the people. Uh, you see the definition hypocrisy, G5, G5272, which is one of the definitions like acting of a stage player. 
Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like being an actor and playing a character. You're not really not really who you are. Mm-hmm. So these are things that we have to be mindful of when he says be mindful of the leaven of hypocrisy. You know, read the entire chapter, you know, it's it's good, but I just wanted to highlight a few points of showing the hypocrisy of the Pharisees that we have to be mindful of. Hallelujah. Watch long. Hallelujah. 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 And the dawn, I would say that was a great, great two minute warning. Um, and the, the thing was, it says, beware of the leaven of the scribes, uh, of the Pharisees and the scribes, meaning that's a warning for who? For us to be aware of it, right? But what do we always do? We can always see someone else. But the warning, as he brought out, was to be warned of what it looks like so that you are not that. You don't become like that, you know? And uh, he was saying they didn't do the weightier, uh, weightier matters of, of the law. So he said, don't leave the other thing undone. Like these things y'all were doing, yeah, do those things. But you left the weightier things undone for it's caring for the people, right? So as I was covering last night when we were talking about 11 bread, so we all have gotten a strong routine of getting 11 out of the house. That's the outer. Mm. <laughs> That's the outer. But the most I said, what? I'm looking at your insides. Like, yeah, so y'all did good. And then what do we do? Oh, you still got something in your house, Jesus, or Talia. You didn't get that out? You didn't check your freezer? Oh, I got all stuff out of my house. But what you got your heart, you, you know what I'm saying? These, that's what it looks like, you know? And so the reason why I'm glad that, uh, and told Ayada he went into that today is because our community, you don't have to be a moray, an elder, an ima, a prasu, a deacon, an officer, a sar, captain, whichever terms the leadership one is using, we as a nation of people, when we come to the knowledge of this truth, we get puffed up because we know this truth and we judge everybody else. So we take on the same form of leaven as a Pharisee. They didn't say you have to be a Pharisee to be leaven. It said, beware the Pharisees, the leaven of the Pharisees. Don't be like them in what they do, but do what they say according to the Torah. And what do we end up doing? Taking on the same mannerisms, the same characteristics, and we're walking around as a community full of leaven by judging others and never cleaning the inside of our heart. So that was a Gadol told, a Gadol told, and very timely two minute warning. So brothers and sisters, please be mindful. You know, um, you know, because I know when I started off, I was kind of judgmental. I was hard. The word says this. And, you know, I will say some of you, I see sometimes y'all can be a tad judgmental, you know, uh, maybe a tad times three or four, you know, sometimes like we can always see something else and I always feel a certain way about this. But are we looking at ourselves? Are we being merciful? Are we concerned with the weightier things? Are we always concerned with ourselves, how we feel about it and how we look? So with that, I give all praise, honor, esteem to the most high, all praise, honor, esteem to the most high, a uh, uh, powerful start to this Shabbat. Great culture study and great two minute warning. I look, so you had something else? No, no, no. Oh, I was oh okay. I was saying, hey, you, you brought that fire. You brought that fire. He, he was sitting over there. I thought he said he would have some more for us. All right. Well, Mr. Bakal, we're going to get ready to go into the praise uh, at this. Sneak out. Didn't mean to do that. We're about to go into praise at this moment. So if there's anyone online before we open it up to in the room as we start to get things set up in here, if there's anyone online that would like to give any praise, honor, esteem to the most high. The floor is now open at this time. We take a few. All right. Going once. All right. All right. Imash Oshana. All right. Shabbat Shalom. All praise and honor and esteem to Yah. I'm a little congested, but I got songs of praise for Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Zion is calling me to a higher place to pray, to stand upon the mountains and to magnify his name. To tell all the people in every nation that he reigns. O Zion is calling me to a higher place of praise. Oh, 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 I will worship.
worship and adore him. I will magnify his name. Let the fruit of my lips be pleasing to you. And let your glory fill this place. Oh, let your glory fill this place. Hallelujah. 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 That was beautiful, Iman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don Michael. Can I yield to Bastion? Uh, you might want to go ahead and don't because the only three hands is up now going to be the only ones we take offline because we're on the time schedule today. So go ahead in the order we in. Okay. Well, I would like to praise the most high um, for his goodness, for his continual mercy. I just thank him for the Ruach HaKadosh and how he is continuing to work in me to deal with me even though it's not always comfortable it doesn't always seem pleasant um i just thank him for continuing to deal with me to show me um you know this leaven that's within me i just give him praise because i i do have a little bit of understanding that his word tells me he loves those that he chastens you know, he's a loving father, you know, and growing up, I didn't have a disciplinary. And eventually, as an adult, I boasted about being a rebel, you know. But now when I look back, I'm like, oh, Abba, I just I just needed to have somebody to guide me and to put restraints on me. And and I didn't I didn't have that. And and, you know, I'm I'm just I'm just thankful that the most high is working in me to help me to appreciate to appreciate his his discipline to appreciate his chastisement to appreciate his his um his correction you know um i think it was david he said i learned obedience through the things that i suffered and and i have had some sufferings but it was out of my disobedience because the most high is just, but in the midst of my sufferings, you know, he has been graciously merciful unto me. I'm telling you, there's a situation that fell upon me out of my disobedience. And I wanted the most high to move one way, but the most high ministered to me, I'm going to move this way. And in moving this way, not only am I going to show you that I am merciful, but I'm going to also show you that I am the one who holds and bears your life in my hand. So I just give the most high praise. I say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah for this great mercy that you are allowing me to continually experience. So I say all praises to the most high, all praises, all praises. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All praise to the most high, all praises. Uh, Shah Shamar. Shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom, and all praise to the most high. As we give praise to the most high for the gift of life, uh, for the mercy of the most high, the correction of the most high, the Torah, the word of the most high. And, you know, I've been, uh, you know, getting myself ready for pay stop, you know, getting 11 out, you know, um, physical and spiritual. And, you know, I would say that my relationship with the Most High has 
definitely got better. Um, you know, I'm trying to, you know, respect the most high more, trying to seek the most high more. And, and I had a dream um, last night and I was just thinking, you know, all right, you know, what is exactly, you know, what does the most high want me to do at this current time, you know? And then a thought just came to my head, you know, seek the most high more so I can get the full understanding. And another thing I was just thinking about is, you know, the most high, you know, is the one who can deliver. So if I am, if I'm in a situation at the end of the day, that's the only savior, the only deliverer, you know, that I, that I know. And I wanted to sing a song. We sing it uh, in an assembly in Hampton, uh, the remnant. It's called No Savior. I don't, I haven't memorized the chorus part, but I can read it, but so I'm gonna go ahead and sing that. The song is called uh, No Savior. Keep us in your hands and under your wings. Keep us in your hands and under your wings. Keep us in your hands and under your wings. There is no Savior but Yahoo, but Elohim. Keep us in your hands and under your wings. Keep us in your hands and under your wings. Keep us in your hands and under your wings. For there is no savior but Yahuwah Elohim. You see me, you redeem me. You free me out of the dark. You clean me, you eat me. You see me as you're set apart. I was lost, now I'm found. I was dead, now I live. When I fall, you call. My response is, oh yeah, keep us in your hands and under your wings. Keep us in your hands and under your wings. Keep us in your hands and under your wings. There is no Savior but Yahweh Elohim. Now you, I praise to the most high. All oh, praise to the most high. Praise, all oh, praise, all oh, praise. Keep us in your hand and under your wings. Hallelujah. All right. Batsion, the floor is yours, Akoti. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Can you hear me? Shabbat shalom. Yes, ma'am. Loud and clear. Um, I want to give all praise, honor, and esteem, all power and blessings to the most high, Yah, El Elyon. I'd also like to acknowledge my ish, Yamim, as my head covering. Um, I want to thank y'all for allowing us to come here today and also in preparation for Pesach. Uh, I have a song I would like to sing. Um, I've been under spiritual attack and um, I already know it's because the season we're in um, and it's trying to stop us from doing what Yah commands us to do, which is to have a holy convocation. And so, um, the song I'm singing is going to be in Hebrew, so I'm going to read it in English first. It's Psalm 77, um, and it's verse 3 and verse 6. But I'm going to read 1 through 6, and then I'll sing it. It'll be a quick song. <clears throat> uh, my voice is to Elohim, and I cry. My voice is to Elohim, and he listened to me. In the day of my distress, I sought, I sought Yahuwah. My hand was stretched out in the night and it did not cease. My being refused to be comforted. I remembered Elohim and groaned. I complained and my spirit grew faint, Selah. You ceased the watches of my eyes. I was too troubled to speak. I have thought about the days of old, the years long past. I remember my song in the night. I meditate within my heart and my spirit searches diligently. So I'll be reading verses, um, singing verse three and six in Hebrew. Okay. Eskela Elohim ve'maya asiyaka ve'titav tefru kisela eskela naginati Balala in levavi 
asiaka vayaka pesruki eskela nagina tivalaila nagina tivalaila hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are you just trying to tease us before Pesach? You, you cut that off on us like that? You, you're teasing us before Pesach? Hallelujah, hallelujah. That was beautiful, Akoti. That was beautiful. All praise, all esteem be to the most high. All right, Mr. McCall, we're going to send up a little praise in the room. So uh, we're going to try to set it where y'all can still see some of the people in the room. It's going on. Well, you say you're ready, Ima? So you got a new, new song? Y'all got a new song? Oh, yeah, we pray you. Oh, yeah, we pray you. Oh, yeah, we pray you.
Oh, okay. So I saw this on a YouTube video and I thought it sounded really good, so I'm going to try to sing it. <clears throat> it's a little slow. It goes like this. What will I render to Yahuwah for his mercy endures forever? What will I render to Yahuwah? For his mercy
Not really clear. Not clear. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the part that came up whenever um, a coach, a coach Jen was speaking and I was writing down all the things that she was doing. Mm -hmm. And then a tall star thrown up on me and it could not stop. And then I see like a picture with a body like a man drawn out and his end was stretched out like this. And his end was stretched out like this. And this is what just came out. It said, take the leaven out your body. And it said, um, right, it just pops up. It said, a man enemy will be built of his own household. And it said, on Corinthian, your body is a temple of the Ruach HaKadash whom you have from Yahuwah, our bodies that are home. And he said, our body is a house that of the Ruach of Yahuwah. So purge yourself and keep your body clean that the Ruach can stay within you. It said, wicked spirit can also be our enemy of our own body. The member of your body can cause you to sin. Your mind, your eyes, your end, your tongue, and a part of your body and these can also be our enemy. And then it brought up, remember the scripture, the eyes is a lamp of our body. If your eyes is good, your old body should be enlightened. But if your eyes is evil, your old body will darken 
And if then, if your body is darkened, how great is that darkness? And then it's saying, if your eyes cause you to sin, pluck it out and cause it away. It is better for you to enter in life with one having two to enter into the yellow fire. And then um, it said the tongue also is a fire, a word of evil among the part of her body. Yahuwah Ruach will not remain in our body if we are full of leaven. Leaven is like a disease that spreads throughout our body. We have to cut it out before it spreads through our body because a little leaven, leaven the old lump. So now purge out the leaven and renew your lump. And that's what came to me last night. Praise you. Hallelujah. Anybody else have anything on their heart before we come down? I'm good. You know, you still you have one. You good? Okay. All right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Shabbat shalom, Shabbat shalom, Ms. Rakai. Can y'all hear me pretty clear without the mic? I'm, I'm good without it. Hallelujah. All right. Shabbat shalom, Ms. Rakai. At this time, I'll ask uh, Shah Shamar if you could do the open and tefla for us on this Shabbat, if you don't mind. Okay. No problem. I'll praise to the both sides. Uh, hearts and minds clear. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Blessed be the name of Yahweh. Abba, I want to say Torah about for this beautiful Shabbat day. Torah about for keeping us alive. And I ask that on this Shabbat that you may forgive us for all of our sins, our transgressions, and our iniquity. And also ask that you forgive the sins, the transgressions, and the nicotine of our ancestors. And I ask that you can have mercy upon us. Remember that we are dust. Remember that we are flesh. Remember that we are seeking the paths of old. Some of us are still waking up. I ask that you may have mercy upon us. Forgive us. Forgive me. I ask that in due season, we could be called sons and daughters of you, righteous sons and daughters of you. And I ask that we will be no longer stiff-necked. I ask that we will be no longer prideful selfish or hateful or slothful, but I ask that we could be zealous for you, zealous for your name, as some of our forefathers were, zealous for your name. Now, I want to say Torah about for a Tobe study last night, Torah about for allowing all the brothers and sisters to get together and give their point of view, to share what you have revealed unto them, Torah about for showing us how to work together, how to help one another out brothers and sisters alike, working together. And I ask that you may continue to bring us together. And I ask that you may teach us how to care for one another, how to help one another. Teach us how to be a car, to be one, to work together with one goal to serve you. And I ask that you prepare our hearts for temptation, prepare our hearts to be tried. And I ask that you prepare our hearts for Pesach. And I ask that you give us the strength to remove any leaven, any sin. I ask that we can appear at Pesach clean, without spot or blemish, and ask that we may be perfect, and ask that you be pleased with the words that proceed out of our mouth and the works of our hands. I ask that you give us the strength to do what is right, even if it seems difficult, even if it seems impossible. And I ask that you will have mercy upon us and walk with us as we seek eternal life, as we seek immortality. And I ask that you give us the strength to overcome any negative thoughts, any sinful thoughts, that may try to throw us off track, any seducing spirits that may try to convince us that we should not hearken unto you. But I ask you to give us the strength to rebuke those thoughts, rebuke those spirits. Give us the strength to rebuke everything that is contrary to your word. And I might ask that you give us a heart that will hate all manner of evil, a heart that will hate and despise sin and evil, all manner of evil. But I ask that you give us a heart that will love you with all of our strength, with all of our soul, with all of our might. And also give us a heart that will love our neighbor as ourselves. 
And I ask as we go into the study, we may open up our hearts to receive your word, to receive your Torah. Let your will be done. Bless you are. Yahweh blesses your name. Yahweh bless he that comes in the name of Yahweh. Amen. If you're speaking more, Ray, you, you're still mute, muted. <laughs> Toda, Toda. <laughs> uh, I said we now have to read another mitzvah, to read another commandments found in the book of Shemot, commonly called Exodus, the 20th chapter, by Don Kanakya. And Elohim spake all these words, saying, I'm Yahweh, which you brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have another Elohim before me. You shall not make it to any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You should not bother yourself to them, nor serve them. Why are you made jealous of them? Feeling iniquity and follows upon the children until the third and fourth generation of them to hate me. And show mercy unto thousands of those that love me and keep my commandments. You should not take the name of Yahweh in vain. We are not hold him guiltless to take his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep hold. Six days shall you labor and do all your work. But the seventh day of the Sabbath of Yahweh, in it you should not do any work. You nor your son nor your daughter, your man servant nor your maid servant, nor your cattle nor your stranger that is within your gates. For in six days y'all made heaven and earth to see in all the midst, and rest in the seventh day. Wherefore y'all bless the Sabbath and holiday. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which y'all leave give you. You should not murder. You should not commit adultery. You should not steal. You should not bear false witness against your neighbor. You should not covet your neighbor's house. You should not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his man, sir, nor his maid, sir, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor. Hallelujah. Shabbat, which means be seated. All right. All right. So again, Mr. Ricard, we're going to say Shabbat Shalom to everyone. We give all praise, honor, and esteem to the Most High. Yeah. All praises to the Most High. Today, Mr. Ricard, we'll be starting off in the book of Shemot, commonly called the book of Exodus, the 19th chapter. We've been covering um, 11 bread, Passover, Pesach. One moment. And so before we start the study, just let me uh, just read you some definitions real quick, or as far as 11, I just want to go ahead and get this out of the way so when I go forward into the lesson, I don't have to come back to this. So we've been talking about Pesach, or Passover, and Unleavened Bread, and again, peace and blessing be upon all the houses that's gathered on this Shabbat, uh, and to all those that have already observed Pesach or Passover on a different day. Uh, we hope your Passover was good, and for those who are preparing to observe it this upcoming week, um, we ask and pray that your Pesach is good. So uh, Shabbat Shalom to all the brothers and sisters that's out here. All right. So I want to go into 11 as we're focusing on the Feast of Unleavened Bread and Passover. So I'm just going to give just a definition of leaven. Leaven, one of the definitions. I'm going to give you about four, possibly five. It says leaven, a substance as yeast or baking powder that causes fermentation. Ferment. Uh, Y'all sleep. Let me turn this mic down. I'm trying to yell. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go without the mic. I'm gonna go without the mic. Y'all, pardon me, pardon me. We go without the mic today. So I want to go back into uh, the definition of leaven. Um, so uh, like I said, I might give you anywhere from three to five of these definitions for what they say leaven is. So leaven is a substance as yeast or baking powder that causes fermentation and expansion of dough or batter. Once again, a substance as yeast or baking powder that causes fermentation and expansion of dough or batter. All right. It says, two, it's going to be fermented dough reserved for producing fermentation in a new batch of dough. So we've heard 